So now in this video we're going to look at the op amp inverting comparator using the LM358 again. And uh, you notice here we have the uh, non-inverting input above the inverting input. When you are wiring up the actual component, and this is the kit that I pulled it out of, you have to make sure you pay attention to where they are on the actual component there. So those are our supply uh, voltages there and uh, positive negative uh, so there you can see the uh, non inverting is on the bottom inverting is above it and output above that uh, but here we have the non inverting above the inverting so you got to make sure you wire the physical component properly not the way that it is on the schematic so in any case now we're setting our reference voltage uh, we covered the uh, non inverting in the last video um, the uh, non inverting comparator circuit now we have the inverting comparator circuit. So we set a reference voltage. A It's fixed to half of the supply voltage because they're equal value resistors. So it does slide up and down. Um, if we're only using 12 volts, it'll be lower, like 6 uh, volts. If we go up to 14.6 volts at the supply, that's uh, what many chargers for lithium iron phosphate batteries, the 12 volt batteries, um, they can be charged up to 14.6 volts. Um, that's not their full voltage. When you remove the charger, it drops down about a volt to 13.6. Um, but if you have a circuitry attached to the battery while it's being charged, it might see 14.6. So I'm gonna work up to uh, that voltage. Uh, a lot of times I just round off to 15, just slightly higher. Um, but in any case, we got a reference voltage here. It slides up and down if the supply voltage goes up and down. Um, but it stays half of that. That's the main thing. Then we got the trim pot. So if we set the trim pot half the way, it's, uh, and you know, it'd be hard to hit the exact same, uh, but you could if you're really uh, persistent. Um, but if this is set about halfway, it's going to be about that same voltage there that you got here. So uh, if you set it a little bit above that, now we have our signal here. This is what we're changing. So we call that the signal. If you set it a little bit higher than halfway, so then you would raise the voltage there above uh, what is at the non-inverting input. You raise it above, then you get a low output. It connects to ground, the blue LED uh, lights up. And it connects to ground pretty good. I haven't measured it, maybe it gets a little more off at these higher voltages, um, but uh, technically it should connect to ground pretty good. These op amps are not really made to power loads. They're meant more to send uh, signals to uh, transistors and stuff. Some transistors don't even need any current, but even the bipolar junction transistors take so little current from the output that you should be able to get the full output uh, voltage range, but loads will throw it off, and uh, it just can't handle big loads at all. These are uh, small loads here. So, in any case, as I said before, we got a higher voltage than our uh, reference voltage. It's a low... Uh, output right there basically connects the ground blue LED lights up just because that's where I placed it in between the positive supply and the output and um, I just like blue to indicate a low output we have a pretty high value resistor there um, this is about the minimum we want so I did the math in the last video I'm not going to post that again uh, we can put about 13 volts across this resistor there and uh, that'll be about as warm as we want to make it so it's a little less than halfway if there's 13 volts across there to the uh, maximum. Uh, I'm using quarter watt resistors. Of course, you could use higher wattage resistors. You could use a lower value. Um, but in any case, that's why I picked that value resistor. So if we drop the trim pot uh, voltage lower than what we have for our reference voltage, then we'll have a high output. So that's where that resistor really comes in. Uh, the LED is going to drop about 2 volts. So if we had 15, drop 2, that would put 13 across that resistor. So this really is about the uh, minimum I recommend for this circuit, 1.5K. But it's not that bad. First off, it might be 14.6 if there's a charger attached, 13.6 if the battery is fully charged. So if you never have a circuit going while the battery is being charged um, for whatever reason, then you don't even have to worry about it. 13.6 will be your maximum lithium iron phosphate fully charged battery. That's just with the charger. Also, um, the full voltage, supply voltage, doesn't make it to the output. Um, the transistors drop. Uh, maybe it's like a volt, maybe a volt and a half. At these higher voltages, it might even get worse. Um, but uh, 
I haven't uh, measured them yet, but uh, you probably be at least a volt short of what you got there anyways, you know, so um, this should be plenty fine, even though it looks like we're kind of close to uh, the limits of the recommended. We're losing a lot more uh, voltage, uh, so there's probably a bit less than 13 volts across it, even when we get the supply voltage up to 15, a little bit above that. So, in any case, uh, that's why we got that value. For the blue LED, blue LEDs are naturally brighter. I think I could even uh, gone a bit higher than this, uh, closer to 4K maybe, because uh, it looks like on the board the blue LED is still a fair amount brighter than the red one. But they're closer, a lot closer than they would be if they both had the same uh, value uh, resistor. So let's uh, zoom back, and uh, you can see the uh, circuit there. I'll do that before I slide the power supply open over. So yeah, we got output, as I showed on the uh, kit. That's the inverting input. So that's where our signal is coming. And then our non-inverting input, that's a couple of fixed value resistors. 10K, exact value doesn't really matter, but uh, 10Ks are commonly used as a voltage divider. That uh, little pin's going to the negative supply right there. Um, so the uh, output is high right now. That tells me that the trim pot is low. So it's connected basically to our ground there. Basically zero volts. And uh, I'll use a screwdriver. It's a little easier to see what's going on. So I'll turn this. Uh, when we get about halfway, now you're going to see the blue LED light up. So I'm closer to the positive supply right there, above halfway. Remember, we set that voltage halfway there. Of course, you can use a different kind of uh, resistance-based voltage divider, and uh, it's going to work the same. They both follow uh, whatever the supply voltage is. So you could use like light-dependent resistor or thermistor which senses temperature or something the supply voltage can change it's not going to change how the circuit works um you know it's going to be influenced by uh, whatever the outside factors are this outside factor is me turning the trim pot right there a little bit lower a little bit higher uh, right there so um we'll uh zoom in you can see at the output the uh, blue led positive supply is up there i know it's kind of cramped um and then down one spot is the 3K resistor with the uh, red LED. So we got uh, ground lower. I'm just trying to keep consistent with having positive above negative. So uh, negative down there. So that's the cathode down at the bottom, anode on top. Same with the blue LED. Cathode there to the resistor, anode to the jumper. So here we got the cathode to the jumper because it's going to ground, anode above it. And then the 1.5K resistor, 1,500 ohm right there. So that is uh, the circuit. Of course, you have to power it. I always have to power it. It may not even be shown on uh, the schematic. And this op amp, as I mentioned in the last video, you can go up to 32 volts when you're using a single supply, which is the uh, positive voltage. That's usually where you get the number. And then ground, that's considered zero volts. A uh, split or dual supply, you can see it's half the voltage, but it's plus or minus. So. Uh, ground is actually a middle point. Just kind of imagine a middle point here. And then there would be the negative voltage. That would be either 12 to 14.6 volts, but it would be negative. And I actually should have put a plus next to those, but uh, you, you don't have to. But I, I try to do that to always indicate that that's more positive. Um, there would also be the more negative. But uh, if you had a negative 12 volts, positive 12 volts, that is a 24 volt difference. So hopefully that makes sense. So 32 volts is the same, basically, as plus minus 16 volts if you ignore that middle point uh, ground, which uh, you may not always be able to do, um, but hopefully you get uh, what I'm saying. So here we have, uh, and I thought this video would be shorter. Hopefully uh, you're enjoying it if you stuck around this long, because I still got a, a bit more to go. So 12.8 volts, that is the nominal voltage of a lithium iron phosphate battery. And the voltage, if you actually use the battery, you don't just charge it, let it sit or whatever. Um, the vast majority of the time, the voltage is going to be relatively close to 12.8 volts. So you can charge it to like 14.6. That'll pack the most charge into it. You could just stop charging it at 13.6 as well. Um, that's still pretty charged. Uh, or like a middle ground voltage between 14.6 and 13.6. Uh, uh, the higher voltage you go to, the more it will pack, but 14.6 is the limit. Um, so 
it'll be 13.6 uh, when it's fully charged and uh, as you use it it'll quickly drop to about 12.8 in that range you know and then it's going to kind of hover in that range for a long time until the battery is getting pretty low then it's going to kind of drop rapidly and usually um, you might as well stop at like 12 volts but if you really want to suck all the uh, power out of it uh, that you can you know you can go down to uh, uh, 10 volts if you want so uh, we'll go down to that floor right there you don't want to go below 10 volts though that could damage uh, the battery so uh, we're up higher the outputs low drop low and the outputs high so yeah you can still see the uh, red LED lamps at its brightest setting it's easier to see when it gets dimmer but even looking at it in person it's it looks like it's a pretty well lit LED I'll, uh, I'll zoom in so not terribly lit we'll go there uh, pull the uh, blue one so now we know the outputs low because the blue LED is lit up and uh, it must have been like right on the edge of a uh, four right there when I bumped it slightly changed stuff uh, so yeah that's probably like 3.9 maybe 99 or something so in any case we can go down to 10 volts but I uh, pretty much recommend like 12 being uh, your goal to stop using it and uh, and then again we can uh, attach a charger maybe it's like a 14 volt charger it doesn't have to be 14.6 but uh, many chargers are 14.6 and um, again that packs all of the energy that you can get into it once it's uh, charging like that and the amount of current goes down I haven't done a lot of charging I don't know the exact numbers but when you charge at like 14.6 if quite a bit of current being pumped into the battery still then uh, you know it's like charging but when it kind of levels off at a low amount of current that's means you got all the charge into it that you can but that's a voltage that uh, if you have the circuit connected to the battery while it's charging it might see um, that amount of voltage right there so I tried to design these to be able to handle 14.6 uh, volts and again as soon as you remove the charger battery is going to really quickly go to 13.6 volts that's uh, fully charged but you can't really tell the charge state as I said before when you charge at a higher voltage it's going to pack some more charge into it but you don't really know that just because it's 13.6 volts you know so um, the uh, voltage that uh, if you measure the battery will you know tell you some stuff about the battery state of charge of course if it's like 12 volts instead of 13.6 volts it's almost discharged whereas this is you know pretty much fully uh, charged but if it's somewhere in the 12.8 uh, volt range you don't know if it's getting close to uh, discharge or if it's still pretty close to charged so um, that's one thing about lithium iron phosphate batteries and I'm kind of rambling on because this is a, a simple circuit we cover the non-inverting comparator in the last video I focused more on the uh, the circuit itself and I'll explain more about uh, batteries now I'm making these videos because uh, a lot of people have lithium iron phosphate batteries they usually use it uh, you know like backup power for their house and stuff but I have smaller batteries I got seven amp hour batteries that's my smallest list lithium iron phosphate I do have lithium ion um, 18650 cells but uh, that's a, a different chemistry the voltages are very different um, so um, sometimes they can be similar but uh, you don't treat a lithium ion battery like a lithium iron phosphate battery so make sure you understand the chemistry of the battery you're using so main thing is uh, we can handle these higher voltages at this point the uh, main problem is how much uh, resistance you need as uh, voltage goes up even at this uh, range as it goes up a little bit now your resistors are going to get quite a bit hotter so um, at some point a single resistor quarter watt resistor is just not going to be able to handle uh, you know pretty much any uh, voltage where you'll be able to do something useful with it um, so there's other things that you can do to uh, compensate for that um, but uh, for the most part um, as the voltage goes up the resistance is going to have to go up rapidly as well um, so if you can't handle uh, your circuit can't handle like high resistances for whatever you got to find uh, some other way to uh, adapt that circuit to that higher voltage so in any case, uh, thanks for watching this long, whoever whoever did, probably like 10 of you. Um, 
check out the uh, other videos I'm posting on the screen, and check out the links down below. They all help out a lot. I'll see you in the next video.